When we use the term polypeptide to refer to a single polymer of amino acids, it may or may not have folded into its final functional form. The term protein is sometimes used interchangeably with polypeptide. It is generally used, however, to refer to a folded functional molecule that may have one or more subunits made up of individual polypeptides. Therefore, when we use the term protein, we are usually referring to a functional folded protein or peptides. Structure is essential for function. If you alter the structure, you alter the function. Usually, but not always, this means you lose all function. For many proteins, it is not difficult to alter the structures. Proteins are flexible, not rigidly fixed in structure. As we shall see, it is the flexibility of proteins that allows them to be amazing catalysts and allows them to adapt to, respond to, and pass on signals upon binding of another molecules or proteins. However, proteins are not infinitely flexible. There are constraints on the conformation that proteins can adapt, and these constraints determine the conformations that proteins display. Even very tiny changes in protein structure can give rise to big changes in the behavior of proteins. Hemoglobin, for example, undergoes an incredibly small structural change upon binding of one oxygen molecule, and that simple change causes the remainder of the protein to gain a considerably greater affinity for oxygen that the protein didn't have before the structural change. The unique amino acid sequence of the protein is reflected in its unique folded structure. This structure in turn determines the protein's function. The significance of the unique sequence or order of amino acids is that it dictates the three-dimensional conformation the folded protein will have. We shall examine protein structure at four distinct levels, some, par some parts of a peptide chain containing 100 to 200 amino acids may form a loop or helix, others may be straight or form irregular coils. The term secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure are frequently applied to the configuration of the peptide chain of a protein. Primary structure is the ultimate determinant of the overall conformation of a protein. The order in which the amino acids are joined together in protein synthesis starts defining a set of inter interactions between amino acids even as the synthesis is occurring. That is, a polypeptide can fall even as it is being made. The simplest level of protein structure, which is the primary structure, is simply the sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. Let us take a very famous protein from the human body the hormone insulin, which has two polypeptide chains in the primary structure. Each chain has its own set of amino acids assembled in a particular order. The sequence of a protein is determined by the DNA of the gene, uh, DNA of the gene that encodes the protein. A change in the gene's DNA sequence may lead to a change in the amino acid sequence of the protein. Even changing just one amino acid in a protein sequence can affect the protein's overall structure and function. For instance, a single amino acid chain is, uh, change is associated with sickle cell anemia, an inherited disease that affects red blood cells. In sickle cell anemia, one of the polypeptide chains that make up hemoglobin, the protein that carries oxygen in the blood, has a slight sequence change. The glutamic acid, that is normally the sixth amino acid of the hemoglobin's beta chain, is replaced by a valine amino acid. This substitution is shown for a fragment of the beta chain in the diagram. What is most remarkable to consider is that a hemoglobin molecule is made up of two alpha chains and two beta chains, each consisting of about 150 amino acids for a total of about 600 amino acids in the whole protein. The difference between a normal hemoglobin molecule and a sickle cell molecule is just two amino acids out of the approximately 600. A person whose body makes 
only sickle cell hemoglobin will suffer symptoms of sickle cell anemia. These occur because the glutamic acid to valine amino acid change makes the hemoglobin molecules assemble into long fibers. The fibers distort disc-shaped red blood cells into crescent, uh, crescent shapes. The sickle cells get stuck as they try to pass through blood vessels. The stuck cells impair blood flow and cause serious health problems for people with sickle cell anemia, including breathlessness, dizziness, headaches, and abdominal pain. The nitrogen and carbon atoms of a peptide chain cannot lie on a straight line because of the magnitude of the bond angles between adjacent atoms of the chain. Such structural features result from characteristics common to all polypeptide chains. The product of their effect is the secondary structure of the protein. So proteins are distinguished from each other by the sequence of amino acids comprising them. The sequence of amino acids of a protein determines protein shape. Since the chemical properties of each amino acid are forces that give rise to intermolecular interactions to begin to create secondary structures. The sequence also defines turns and random coils that play important roles in the process of protein folding. Since shape is essential for protein function, the sequence of amino acids gives rise to all of the properties that protein has. As protein synthesis proceeds, individual components of secondary structure start to interact with each other, giving rise to folds that bring amino acids close together that are not near each other in primary structure. The order of the radical group structures and resulting interactions are very important because early interactions affect later interactions. This is because interactions start establishing structures, secondary and tertiary. As protein synthesis progresses, interactions between amino acids close to each other began to occur, giving rise to local patterns called secondary structure. The secondary structure forms within a polypeptide due to interactions between atoms of the backbone. These secondary structures include the well-known alpha helix and beta strands. Each structure has unique features. Both structures are held in shape by hydrogen bonds, which form between the carboxyl group of amino acid and a minor group of another. The alpha helix has a coiled structure with 3.6 amino acids per turn of the helix. So five helical turns uh, are, formed, are formed by 18 amino acids. In the alpha helix, hydrogen bonds form between carbon to oxygen groups and nitrogen and hydrogen groups in the polypeptide backbone that are four amino acids distant. These hydrogen bonds are the primitive forces stabilizing the alpha helix. The stability of an alpha helix is enhanced by the presence of the amino acid aspartate. A helix is, of course, a three-dimensional object. A flattened form of helix is two dimensions in a common description for a beta strand. Rather than coils, beta strands have bends, and these are sometimes referred to as pleats, like the pleats in a curtain. Beta strands can be organized to form elaborately organized structures. In the beta pleated sheet, the pleats are formed by hydrogen bonding between atoms of the backbone of the polypeptide chain. Higher order beta strand structures are sometimes called supersecondary structures since they involve interactions between amino acids not closing primary sequence. These structures too are stabilized by hydrogen bonds between carboxyl oxygen atoms and hydrogens of amine groups in the polypeptide backbone. Beta pleated sheet crystals are among the most stable of protein secondary structures and are responsible for the remarkable physical properties of many fibrous proteins, such as silk or protein forming plaques as in Alzheimer's disease. The secondary structure of silk is the beta pleated uh, strands. The primary structure of silk contains the amino acids of glycine, alanine, serine in specific repeating patterns. These three amino acids make up 90% of the protein in silk, 
The last 10 consist of the amino acids, glutamic acid, valine, and aspartic acid. These amino acids are used as the side chains and affect things such as elasticity and strength. They also vary between various species. The beta, uh, beta strand of silk is connected by hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds in the silk form beta strands rather than alpha helices because of where the bonds occur. Silk is a great example of a beta strand uh, secondary structure. The formation of the secondary protein structure in silk allows it to have very strong tensile strength. The stiffness of silk, which is its ability to deform elast elastically when force is applied. It is many times less than that of steel, where spider silk seems to beat steel by a large margin uh, is its density, which is almost six times less. Essentially, that means a strand of silk is much stronger for its size than a steel beam is. Thanks for watching.